For more than 150 years, a college campus has been an integral part of Elmhurst's identity, growing and changing with the times to become what is now known as Elmhurst University. Let's take a look back at the school's formative years to see how a small pro-seminary on the prairie became the academic institution we know today. I'm Dan Lund, Curator of Collections at the Elmhurst History Museum, and you're watching Elmhurst History in Focus. The German Evangelical Pro Seminary that became today's Elmhurst University was founded in 1871 on land gifted to the church by Thomas Barber Bryan and held its first classes in January of 1872. During its first year, 24 students lived and studied in a single building on the outskirts of town. The Pro Seminary was a high school that prepared students to attend the Evangelical Seminary or become teachers in the church's parochial schools. By decade's end, enrollment had reached 100 students and two new buildings stood on campus. The school established strong roots by the 1880s, hosting a campus of three buildings and seven faculty that housed and taught approximately 100 students per semester under the German gymnasium model of education. Pre-seminary students studied Greek and Latin, while those on a teacher track studied pedagogy. Owing to the roots of the founding church, as well as the large immigrant population of the Elmhurst area, all instruction was conducted in German. During its pro-seminary years, the school charged a flat fee of $150 for attendance. From 1871 through 1913, this cost was never raised, and it covered tuition, room, board, and laundry. The school maintained a farm, which occupied a majority of campus, tended to by students as an alternative to a tuition system. Everyone chipped in to help run the college. Many students chopped wood and drew water for chores, while older students helped the inspector govern the pro-seminary. The assignment of Baker was particularly coveted, as it often meant receiving extra portions of food. The school modernized in several ways as it entered the 20th century. Some changes were led by students, who began forming athletic programs in the early 1900s before the school itself began supporting teams in 1919. Other shifts came about from changes in higher education. When the pro-seminary opened, high schools were uncommon. But by the early 20th century that was no longer the case, and many alums called for dropping the school's classical German curriculum and making it a true college requiring a high school diploma for admission. World War I dealt the final blow to the traditional gymnasium model of education, and the school officially became Elmhurst Academy and Junior College in 1919. In 1923, school leadership voted to become a four-year senior college, and the school received junior college accreditation the following year. Elmhurst's sixth president, H. Richard Niebuhr, traveled all over the country raising funds towards the goal of turning the school into an accredited four-year senior college. A master plan designed by Chicago architect Benjamin Franklin Olson was unveiled in 1925. President Niebuhr's vision for a greater Elmhurst College campus and the designs drawn up by Olson continued to influence the growth of the campus for decades, right on through to the present day. While the campus and mission expanded, the Synod's monetary allowance to the school did not. Deficits mounted, and declining attendance forced the school to close the academy in 1928. The stock market crash in 1929 was devastating to the college's fundraising prospects. With financial stresses mounting, a movement began to turn Elmhurst College into a co-educational institution. This was made a reality when the first class of female students enrolled in classes in the fall of 1930. In 1934, Elmhurst College received full senior college accreditation. The now fully co-educational accredited institution was well positioned to overcome the challenges ahead. While many alumni were growing concerned that the school was straying too far from its roots, student enrollment grew in the late 1930s. Reforms were taken to modernize the governing structure of the school, and in 1942, the college received its own charter. It was no longer owned by the Evangelical Synod, though the church still had substantial control over the school through its board of trustees. When the nation entered World War II at the end of 1941, 
Elmhurst College took several steps to aid in the cause as well as to ensure its own survival. Classes and faculty were cut in anticipation of smaller numbers of enrollment, and both an aviation program and a naval training course were added to the curriculum. As enrollment dropped, the war years were tenuous for the college, but the end of the conflict saw record numbers of students in 1946 and 1947. It is estimated that 500 Elmers College students and alumni served in the armed forces during World War II. The post-war years were a time of prosperity for the college. Its long-standing debts were retired, student enrollment grew, and the school pursued an ambitious building program in the 1950s. The decade came to a close with the construction and dedication of Hammerschmidt Memorial Chapel in 1959. Expansion continued into the 60s with the construction of new dorms and a student union. In 1965, the college became an independent institution, affiliated with, but no longer controlled, by the church. The Vietnam War and the Civil Rights Movement were of keen interest to the student body during this time, and the college made an effort to enroll more students of color by the late 1960s. The following decades were periods of change in higher education, and keeping enrollment numbers steady was a challenge. Elmhurst College responded by creating new offerings for non-traditional students that included accelerated and weekend courses for adults through the Center for Special Programs and a new Center for Business and Economics. Graduate courses were offered in partnership with area universities. The college made it through the 1980s and 90s on firm financial footing with a substantial endowment, fundraising success, and a newly revised curriculum. The school entered a new century with record enrollment, a larger faculty, and increased course offerings and graduate programs. In July 2020, the school changed its name for the first time in almost a century, becoming Elmhurst University to reflect a broad range of opportunities that the institution offers its students today. In 2021, the school celebrates its 150th anniversary. Looking back at its humble roots as a pro seminary, but looking towards the future as a modern university. This documentary was produced in conjunction with the Elmhurst History Museum's exhibit, An Ever-Widening Circle, commemorating the school's 150th anniversary, on display from September 24, 2021 through January 22, 2022. For more information, please check out elmhursthistory.org.